Hey, what's going on? It's Bill Burr, and it's time for the Monday Morning Podcast for Monday, November 20th, 2023. What's going on? How are you? <clears throat> How's it going in your world? Is it going good? I hope so. I hope so. I'm fucking burnt out. I'm wiped out. I am uh, any other out that you want to find. I am just, my tour is done. I'm back from Las Vegas. I think I've done all of my business that I have to fucking do. And I think I'm off this week. And I'm going to try, I'm going to try to do something that I don't know how to do is basically sit around and fucking do nothing. You know, that's what the fuck I want to do. I got to get smart again. <laughs> it's one of the dumbest things I've ever said. You know what my problem is? I'm not, I'm not smart. I got to get smart again. No, I kind of just uh, was working out. I was doing fine. And then I got a little sick and, uh, you know, stop working out, stop stretching, stop practicing my French, got fucking addicted to my phone again. I mean, I think even when I have my phone under control, it's fucking insane how much I'm looking at my phone. Just looking at it, constantly looking at it. I was on a plane today and I was like, this is it. This is the last stupid game on your phone that you're going to look at. And I just kept going. I play this stupid fucking, you know, word search game. And I'm like obsessed, like I have to do it every single day. They have the daily one, you know, to get you hooked on it. And I don't want to miss it because if you miss one, then you don't get the bonus points for doing it 10 days in a row and then 20 days in a row. Then the whole, the whole fucking thing is designed to fucking have you addicted to it. I was doing, oh man, a few months ago, you can't believe what I was doing. I was reading books, you know? I was practicing French. I was fucking laying off bread. <laughs> I was fucking killing it. I don't know what happened. Fucking, I don't know. I just, I got, I just, I'm now like, just like, I'm just another guy standing in line that just put his name in. Sunday morning at Denny's. Hey, you want to go to Denny's like everybody else is going to do after church and just fucking stand outside? Next to everybody else staring at their fucking phones. It's like, what am I doing? I only have so much time on this earth. I'm going to sit here and play these stupid cell phone fucking games. I'm sorry, guys. I'm going to fucking... I'm in a, a bizarre place right now. I'm also fucking upset because I, I fucking bet the Seattle Seahawks and they had the goddamn game one, I thought. And then they lost it and then they came down and they could have won it and they missed a field goal. How fucking funny is that? Like, you know, gambling on sports... It's literally like, my team isn't even playing this week. I should just have the week off and just enjoy the games. But instead, I get upset because two NFC fucking West teams, like I give a fuck about that division. I don't give a fuck about the NFC West until my team goes to the Super Bowl and, may, and, and if there's a fucking guy, a team from that. Have we ever played anybody from the West? Well, we played the Rams and we played the, uh, the Seahawks. Beat them both. Yes, we did in happier days. Um, anyways, but that, you know, that's the way the cookie crumbles, you know, I mean, that's how it works. You know, what I do love about sports gambling. I love those guys <clears throat> that those professionals, you know, the, these professional guys. And it's like, you know, I'm, I'm, you know, you fucking hire me and I'll, I'll give you winners. It's like, well, why don't you give them to yourself? If you can pick winners, what the fuck are you doing? Wasting your time trying to help me out for what are you mother Teresa of degenerate gamblers and you always look at them and they, they don't look like they got a lot of money they look like they need money gamblers always got that fucking shiny bracelet or that watch or that chain they got that one thing that they they you know from that week that they won and then other than that they fucking look like they're hanging under uh, hanging out under the fucking bleachers but anyways that's why I gamble responsibly I'll tell you, if I was fucking responsible, I wouldn't even watch the shit with two kids at home. I literally, dude, I had to take a fucking walk. When that motherfucker, I don't even know his name, missed that 55-yard field goal, and I'm calling him a motherfucker because he missed a 55-yard field goal. Like, that's some sort of chip shot. I'm having a tough season. I can't remember the last time one of those, a backdoor cover, 
a fucking drop pass, a missed field goal, any of that shit has gone my way. It's unreal. But it does make sense, right? It does make sense. I mean, I'm going, I'm going up against fucking mathletes, computers, and fucking AI scenarios. Whatever. Um, having said that, I had a great fucking time in Las Vegas. I want to thank everybody that came out. Uh, played this beautiful theater out there and um, wrapped up the Bill Burr live tour. You know, you know, it's funny. Every time you have a tour, they want you to come up with a new fucking name. It's just like, dude, there's just there's no names left. Like, what am I supposed to call it? Bill Burr serendipity, the serendipity, to- serendipitous. The uh, gesticulation tour, like all, all, like it's like trying to name a stand up special. Like, what, there's been so many of them. What, what is left? That's a good name. What is left? And we'll take a picture of you and you're shrugging your shoulders. That's going to be the name of my next special. Right? That's how I thought it was going to work. Right? And I'll just be shrugging my shoulders, like, what are you going to do? The fuck are you going to do? I do want to talk a little bit of shit, though. <clears throat> the, um, I went to that uh, Formula One race last night in Las Vegas. It was fucking amazing. It was amazing. And, then, you know, there's a lot of F1 fans were going, oh, my God, what a boring track and all of that. So I was getting, like, all self-conscious, like, ah, you know, Americans, what did we do wrong this time? What's the problem? There's not, not enough turns, not enough chicanes for you, for your purest heart. Well, you know why that is, Europe? Because we have land over here. All right? Your countries are the size of states over here. We actually have fucking land. We don't have to, like, pave over some cow path, all right, that Henry VIII walked down when he was telling everybody to go fuck themselves because he was eating all the turkey legs or whatever the fuck those idiots did. Yeah, you could go from basically the, uh, the stratosphere <laughs> all the way up to the MGM going over fucking 200 miles an hour. I was sitting on that straightaway, and they were passing each other. They were making moves down that fucking straightaway over 200 miles an hour. How many overtakes were there? I mean, are you really going to sit there? I get you don't like America. I get that you think we're fucking stupid, but you're going to sit there and tell me that race wasn't entertaining. I fucking loved that race, and I loved how American it was. Minimal amount of turns, foot to the fucking floor, bunch of passing. It was over fast. Fucking race was only like an hour and 45, hour and 50 minutes. And then in the end, there was a ridiculous display of fireworks. Like... Like that fireworks, it could have it could have ended a minute earlier, and it kept going. Just total excess, you know. Just all about the highlights. It was it was very American. So I, I felt that it was authentic, and I actually think that it helps the sport because all of the purists that love all those legendary tracks around the world can now feel more pure because they can compare it to Vegas where we have, like, storm drains popping up and fucking destroying cars. You know? I mean, I think it all worked out. Dude, I had no idea that Max Verstappen, who I was calling Sebastian Vettel, that's how fucking long it's been since I watched Formula One. I just got so fucking bored with Lewis Hamilton winning every single fucking week. It was just, it was stupid. Um, not stupid. I mean, I respect the guy and all of that, but it was just like, why am I, why am I watching this? And it'd be 72 laps, 58 laps of Lewis Hamilton in first place. What's, you know, it would get to the point. Sometimes he would have such a lead. They would, they wouldn't show him for like 20 minutes. They'd be showing the battle for second or third place. Cause that was the only place where there was action. <laughs> And now, what is it? Fucking Max Verstappen has won 18 out of 20 races. It's a very dominant time. They got to bring back that fucking kid. In 2015, that was the best year of racing that I saw. That was like Days of Thunder meets fucking uh, Formula Formula One. What the fuck was his name? I can't remember. 
It was it was Lewis Hamilton's teammate, and they were smashing into each other. <clears throat> it's a good time. So anyway, we went there. I want to thank everybody at, at Formula One. We had such a great time. Those cars were so goddamn fast, and we were so close. It was literally shaking the stands that we were on, the makeshift stands. And um, I don't know what all the fucking complaining was about. Everybody was fucking bitch moaning and complaining. It was like, look, it's the first year. They're going to make some mistakes, you know, but I think overall that, that was one of the most exciting races. I mean, that's the third one I've been to. I've been to Austin and, Mon and Montreal, and that was head and shoulders as far as excitement went head and shoulders above um the other two and the other two were fun but this one was just insane i mean like what was it sergio perez um max verstappen and um the fucking ferrari driver what the fuck's his name leclerc or whatever they all were in first place at some point during the race passing each other and whatnot. Um, <clears throat> it was amazing. So <clears throat> love it or hate it. That's what the track looks like. I mean, come on. You didn't think going by the sphere was amazing? You saw in the end when the sphere turned into a soccer ball. A little tip of the cap to the rest of the fucking world. You know? Like, there you go. <laughs> There's the ball you all love. Um I did see yet another fucking video on um, some English guy talking about American football. <clears throat> I don't understand why they have such a problem with it. You know what I mean? It's like, you don't have to watch it. <laughs> you don't have to watch. The, the sport is doing fine. Is it because they have those stupid games over there? I don't understand. When, they, when is the NFL... I think they know it's not going to, it's never going to be that popular over in Europe. So, but it's a way for them to have four games. Because doesn't the European game come on like super early on the East Coast? I can't fucking remember. I have no idea. All I do know is that my son likes Kojak and I can watch that with them. So that's cool. So um, anyway, we spent the time down at the, we stayed at the Bellagio, man, which I really liked. Um, felt like I was age appropriate in that casino. <clears throat> I don't like being in those casinos where I feel like it's a young person casino, you know, cause then everything's going to be super loud and it's going to be nothing I can relate to. And then everybody's going to be looking at me like, is that guy a cop? You know, is he a chaperone? Are you my Uber driver? You know, <laughs> it's just like, no. No, son, I'm just too old to be in this casino. Um, oh, here's another thing. I, I want to I wanna like have this be a segment of signs that capitalism is nearing the end. Um, I don't know, nearing the end towards, I don't know what, going back to the Industrial Revolution or a revolution by regular people, um, which won't happen. Regular people will never be able to get on the same page as long as fucking ignorant, broke white people still feel like they're more special than other races of people. You're not more special. You're the same. Let's all get on the same page. There's literally 350 sociopaths running the deal. There's way more of us than there are of them. And they keep us pitted against each other. All right? I'm preaching unity here, people. Um... My buddy, you know, I met some of my, my high school buddies were out there in Vegas, and uh, one of them came from I don't know what casino, but he goes, I, I just went to go play blackjack at whatever casino, and at that casino, if the dealer hit 22, it was a push. Can you fucking believe that? Like, they're applying the shit that they've always applied. Every quarter, we have to make more money. They've already exhausted exhausted like how much they can fuck you with bottled water and all of that like back in the day when the mob ran it you know all they took was the gambling they gave away everything else everything else was cheap the, I'm telling you the end of these fucking corporations 
I got well, maybe not. I guess you know what the the really what's smart about corporations is you don't know anybody's fucking names. And uh, the smart mobsters were like that. Like you never knew their names their whole life, and they died of old age, and they kept their money. They went legit, all of that shit. It was the dum dums that were in the news, wearing the flashy suits, and uh, doing all of that shit. So, I don't know. Anyway, they just apply these things. It's just like, aren't you making enough money off of people playing blackjack that you have to add that extra thing? And this is another thing, too, about gamblers. Like, you should just, like, collectively be like, we're not playing blackjack if 22 is a push. You hit 22, you fucking lose. I, God, I wish I was good at math. Does anybody out there know the algorithm or whatever the fuck it is? The theorem? to figure out how much money that's going to save them or how much more that that fucks you as the person playing. You know, I mean, think about that. Just that one number, it doesn't seem like a big deal. You know what pisses me off is it's such a blatant fuck over and such a greedy fucking move by the casino. But after a while... You know, people my age, whatever, we're going to get old and die. And then, like, all, all those other gen- younger generations just going to grow up where 22 is a push. It's like, no, dude, you just fucking lost. You went over. And it only works for the dealer. If I hit 22, I fucking lose. So you just bought yourself another fucking number. Oh, people. You know, you want to upgrade to Fry's. If the dealer hits 22, it's a push. What was the other one I had? I'm making the list here. These little fuckovers. So they can try to carve out another fucking five bucks off of everybody. Oh, that bullshit where the tipping is included. The tipping's, the tip's included. The tip's included. No, no, I'm going to tip in cash. I'm tipping in cash and I'm giving it to the fucking waiter. <clears throat> I asked this waitress there, I go, do you know, when they, they say the tip's there, do you get it? She goes, oh, we get some of it. I go, where does the rest of it go? They go, oh, I have to pay the front desk person. The fuck out of here. Pay the front desk person and to pay the guy that owns this fucking business. Oh, oh, Billy's in a mood. Billy, he's in a mood. I did have a good time, though, when I was out there in Vegas, you know. There was a couple of ice cream stores. You know, one of my favorite things ever is to see a grown man eating a fucking ice cream. It's one of the funniest things ever. I don't know why it's so goddamn funny to me. Because it's just, so, to me, like, getting in... I, if it's in a dish, it's not as bad. But when it's in a cone, I just look at the person like, why didn't they just tie a balloon to your wrist? You know? And plus, I feel like ice cream is like... That's like a very effeminate thing to do. That's like a chick thing. Like, who goes out and gets ice cream as a fucking man? You know, and by the way, I love ice cream. Okay, so I'm not not saying that I'm a man here. That's what it, you know what it is. I am I'm I have shame. If I ate ice cream in public in a cone, I would have shame because it's just one of those things. You know, this those fucking you know, just standing on a street corner like a red light, like eating a donut. I, you ever just see people just doing it or like, I love like, you know, the coffee house fatties. Those people that come out with their fucking frappuccino and like a muffin or a bagel. And you look at them, they just, they're ballooning up. And you just like, you know, I got to get it to start my day. It's like, you're going to go with caffeine, sugar, and all of those fucking carbs. It's like, you're going to be, you're going to fucking face plant by 1030 at work. <clears throat> And this is coming from someone who doesn't know how to fucking eat. Um, I mean, I, I guess I kind of know how to eat, but like these, these fucking assholes that learn how to eat. This is my question for you. How do you learn how to eat? Where is the right information? The food lobby is so strong and they have so much fucking misinformation out there and everybody's fucking like fighting for whatever crop it is that they're selling as the latest thing that's going to help you fucking lose weight. Um, I don't know. Yeah, the ice cream, the donut, 
gummies, gummy bears. I don't know. I got to lay off cigars. If Snoop Dogg can fucking lay off weed, Jesus Christ. I think I can do that, can I? Just once, can you go to bed without smoking a fucking cigar? Thinking about that field goal kicker. Oh, why they went into the prevent defense. Is that ever going to work out for me? Can someone just drop a pass that makes me then cover? Can I, can I win a backdoor cover? Can somebody miss a field goal and then I win the bet? Can that fucking happen this year? All right. Well, I have nothing to do now. I'm done. Old Dads came out. It's on Netflix. It's done great. I went, oh, I didn't tell you. I tell you, I went to the premiere of, I came back, uh, landed, <clears throat> took an early flight out. There's a new show, a new movie on Netflix, new Adam Sandler movie on Netflix called Leo and uh, stars Adam Sandler and a bunch of super talented people. I have a small role in it. And um, I went to the premiere and uh, stuck around and watched the movie and it's fucking fantastic. It's one of my favorite things Adam has done. <clears throat> it's going to be a great movie to watch with you, you know, your whole family, the kids and all of that. But there's a lot of jokes in there for adults too. So, um, and I got to do a voice in it. I got to be in the booth a couple of times with Adam and, you know, he lived up to all of the hype. He really is the greatest fucking guy you'd ever want to meet. So check that out if you get a chance. Um, so what am I going to do? Does anybody have, does somebody have the book, man, on fucking <laughs> how to eat right? I've had to do this podcast like 15 times because I was so fucking mad about that Seattle game that I can't even remember if I talked about those fucking guys who after they've lost enough times gambling, they then fucking start telling you that they're going to pick you winners. I probably already talked about it. I just can't get over the fact that people go to people like that. It's like, dude, if you could pick winners, you wouldn't be talking to me. I'm a fucking loser. Right? Like, what are you doing here? And why are you still dressed like that? <laughs> um... Why are you going on all these podcasts talking about science? Why aren't you out sciencing? You know, why are you on TV fucking giving people fucking five minutes of therapy before you go to a commercial break? I just don't understand any of those fucking shows. But also, while I sit there and I laugh at that shit, I will sit there and stare at my goddamn phone and play these stupid games that I know are just tracking information or doing some sort of facial recognition to me. Um, yeah, I think what I'm really trying to say in this 23 minutes is that I need three days of doing absolutely nothing and I need to shut my fucking brain down. I need to get away from the TV. I need to stop watching sports. I got to let this cell phone game go. I got to let it go. I mean, I am on a fucking streak with this thing. I have not missed a day. Um, I've done it a couple times accidentally, but you can make it up and it costs you 25 points. And then I immediately have to do things in the game to get the 25 points back. And I've earned over 22,000 fucking freebie points. Um, I played the game so much. Sometimes the end of my fingers hurt from the friction of me swiping it on the screen. Um, entire flights across the country playing this stupid fucking goddamn game, right? I need to stop doing that. I got to get back into meditating. I got to get back into my French. I got to fucking chill out. I got to chill out. So somebody was telling me, you know, when I went into that UFC thing, Dana White looked like a fucking million bucks. I think he's a, I think he's a little bit younger than me, but we're almost the same age, right? He looked fucking great. And someone was telling me he did this fast, right? A fucking, you know, I don't know what, a three-day thing. There's no way in three days he looked that fucking good. I think it, it, it reset him maybe. I don't know what. It was like all water this day, bone broth the next two days. Although that sounds like, like what's, how What's-Her-Face eats. 
is an actress that eats like that, and she doesn't look good. I don't know. Who the fuck knows? Anyway, I'm just going to get through the podcast here, people. This is what I'm doing. I'm doing this Sunday night. I'm getting through this fucking thing so I can sit down and watch fucking Kojak and fall asleep. <laughs> That's what I want to do. Give my voice a rest. And uh, I don't know what else. Fucking get my shit together. Um, anyways, congratulations to Max Verstappen. And, for and congratulations to... Uh, uh, F1 and all of that shit. That was uh, what a, it was. Fucking amazing event. It really was amazing. You know what was cool? So I saw these two guys. They both had like a full head of white hair watching the fucking race, and I just was convinced that they were Italian because they were rooting for the fucking Ferrari. So I asked them at the end of the race. I said, "Hey, where are you guys from?" And one of them said, "I'm from Thailand," and the other guy said he was from Australia. And I said, "Did you enjoy the race?" And they said, "Yeah, it was fucking amazing." And I said, good, because I was getting self-conscious. Everyone around the world said this track was boring or whatever. I thought it was pretty exciting. They said, this is one of the best races of the year. So it made me feel good. Because, you know, they're always shitting on us over there. You know that old cunt on that fucking car show? He's always calling Americans stupid and all that, which is so fucking funny to me. Like, there's this deep intellect in England. Like, when I go over there, I'm like, wow. God damn, are these people smart? I've never thought that. Um, I never thought they were stupid, but I was just walking around. I was like, they, they, you know, they speak in English. It sounds different than our English, but other than that, cuisine's a little different. By the way, England, what exactly did you do with all of the spices that you took from India? You certainly didn't put them in your food. Did the royal family only get it? Um, air gun, everyone. All right, Bill. Methinks air rifle or pistol that shoots plastic pellets is the same as having a gun around the house. Oh, I think he said, my wife thinks an air rifle. I don't know what an air rifle is. Or a pistol that shoots plastic pellets is the same as having a gun around the house. I asked her what the injury or death stats were, and she said she didn't know. I said, until you show me something, I'm sticking to my plan. I'd like to have some type of deterrent since there are break-ins happening all around my neighborhood while, peop while people are home. Thoughts? 100% uh, I think you're in the right. You know? And I actually think it's, it's like irresponsible to, you know, with, with how much corporations are taking Versus what they're paying in taxes, which is what is fucking hilarious about the super rich is they always try to get broke people, you know, middle class people upset with poor people like they're the reason the system, they're the ones milking the system. And these guys are like fucking declaring bankruptcy and not paying taxes and moving their com companies outside the fucking country and all of that shit. Just totally working the system. Um. You know, causing people to have to be desperate. You know, I mean, look, there's some people that are just born and they're just fucking pieces of shit. I'm not saying that, but there's a lot of people like, you know, after a while, you got to do something right. Like all these fucking people that have jobs. You know, and they look at people. Oh, my God, this person's a piece of shit because they, they stole from this person that it's like, you know, you are three days without food and water from eating your neighbor. Don't ever forget that. Okay, it's very easy if you have a fucking job and food in the fridge to not go around sticking a gun in somebody's fucking face. <laughs> um, anyways, I think uh, your wife needs some stats. And I also think that her, her idea is going to change when somebody comes through the door. She's going to be fucking happy that you have something. It's like people that don't believe in God or even have issues with them like me. You know, when I feel like a plane's going to crash, I still say a prayer. I mean, I don't think it works. I still do it. I mean, I don't know if it's muscle memory, but it's not because I believe it. You know, when I, I see all these horrible things, I mean, you're telling me all of these people in the Gaza Strip on both sides aren't saying prayers every day and they still get killed or their loved ones die? I just don't see prayers getting answered. 
Um, but, you know, when you know you think you're going to die, you're desperate. You know, you call up the fucking Hail Mary. <clears throat> hey, God, you got one in you? Huh? Can you fucking help me out here through if you fucking give a shit? That's how I pray. Um, anyway, uh, no, I think, I think that you should be able to defend yourself if somebody comes through the front door, especially as the man in the house. I mean, other than that, what the fuck are you doing? I mean, she can give you a kid. What are you going to do? You know what you're going to do? You're going to take out your air rifle and your pellet gun, you know? And maybe a fucking Chinese star or a fucking some nunchucks. You got to do something. You can't just fucking sit there handing over a lazy Susan, right? All right, restaurant R.I.P. You know, I just realized I went right into the questions without even reading any fucking advertising. What the fuck am I doing here? Is it because I put them in the wrong order? Yeah, I put them in the wrong order. All right. Guys, if you haven't figured out yet, I'm fucking fried. I am fried. Um, all right, policy genius. You know, the holidays not only allow us to spend time with family, but are a reminder of how important our responsibility is to protect them. I spaced halfway through that sentence. Uh, that includes planning to secure their future. Life insurance is an easy way to give your family peace of mind. Um, it provides a safety net. So if something were to happen to you, your family can cover expenses while getting back on their feet. Um, optional expenses to mention mortgage payments or college costs. Yeah, you don't want your kid all of a sudden to not be able to go to college or for your family to lose the house. Luckily, Policy Genius helps you compare your options from the top companies and their team of licensed experts are on hand to help talk you through it. Even if you already have a life insurance policy through work, it may not offer enough protection for your family's needs and it may not follow you if you leave your job. I love that shit. And then what do, what do they do with all of that money that you paid into the policy? The corporate cunts, they probably keep it. With Policy Genius, you can't find life insurance policies. That's probably another scam that they do. We'll get them to pay in for life insurance. We'll have them pay into it for 20 years, and then we'll fire them and keep all the fucking money um, that we never put towards the fucking policy to begin with because we rolled the dice that he wasn't going to die. Uh, with Policy Genius, you can find life insurance policies that start at just 292 bucks per year for $1 million of coverage. Some options offer same-day of approval and avoid unnecessary medical exams. Policy Genius is for parents, caregivers, or anyone else who has people who depend on them. They simplify the process of getting life insurance so you can protect the people you love. Your family deserves peace of mind. A life insurance policy through Policy Genius can give it to them. Head to policygenius.com slash Bill Burr or click the link in the description to get your free life insurance quotes and see how much you can save. That's policygenius.com slash Bill Burr. All right, look who it is, everybody. My voice is shot, so I'm going to have to go easy here. It's old Zip. Ray Crudup. <laughs> That's all I got. Uh, did you know that around 46 million turkeys are eaten on Thanksgiving each year in the U.S.? Wait, is this a PETA ad or is this ZipRecruiter? Think about all the people involved in getting that. There you go. Let's make it about humans again. Think about all the people involved in getting that turkey from your farm to your table. The turkey f farm laborers, food safety inspectors, food production workers, and more. Yeah, all those turkeys that need to die. So let's not leave them out of it. If they don't fucking die, all those people got nothing to do. Uh, it's not easy. Turkeys are calling ZipRecruiter right now to find turkey farms that they can commit Harry carry on. It's not easy to find people with the specific skills required for these jobs. But if you need to hire for these jobs or any other jobs, there's only one place to go, and that's old Zip. Yes, yes. And right now, you can try it for free at ZipRecruiter.com. How does Zip help you find top talent for hard-to-fill roles? Well, they send... It sends... 
your job to 100 plus job sites so you can reach more of the right people. ZipRecruiter's powerful technology does the work for you. It scans thousands of resumes to find great matches for your job. ZipRecruiter lets you invite the most qualified people to help apply to your job to help you stand out amongst the competition. So if you're hiring, discover what ZipRecruiter brings to the table. Four to five employers who post on Zip. <laughs> Uh, get a quality candidate within the first day. Just go to this exclusive web address right now to try ZipRecruiter for free. ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Again, that's ZipRecruiter.com slash Burr. Spell out Burr, B-U-R-R. ZipRecruiter, the smartest way to hire. I mean, I just love, love the, love the, I just love how that, that copy's written. The smartest way to hire, you know? Just wish you guys could see me. I always have my eyebrows up and I nod when I read that line. All right, restaurant RIP. Bill, what's the one restaurant that no longer exists or doesn't exist in the same way due to lack of quality or change of menu that you wish you could visit again? I have to say old school Pizza Hut where it felt like a classy joint or Wendy's when it had the salad and the taco bar. I miss Wendy's when it, it the, the, the tabletops were like old newspaper. Uh, it was... It was still the same material like Formica, but it was the, the, the surface when you looked at it was these old newspaper um, front pages from the past. And they were big enough where you could sort of like read them. They were like famous ones and sort of random things. Um, <clears throat> I liked old school Pizza Hut, but I, I always hated those red bathroom glasses that they put the soda in. Um, all right, if I could go back, yeah, I must have when McDonald's had the blue uniforms and Burger King had those fucking crazy brown, orange, and yellow uniforms, you know, with the Rudy from Fat Albert hat that went along with it. Um... And I always miss when McDonald's was just trying to kill you. You know, I like their menu better. Like, I haven't been there in years. And recently, when I was out and about, my lovely wife had a craving for it. So I went through the drive through I hadn't been there in forever. And I looked at the menu. I didn't even recognize it. I mean, it looks like real burgers now. It's like, this isn't what you guys do. <laughs> um, no, there was something else. There was... You guys, you got me on a spot here because this is a great fucking question and I'm just drawing a blank. I know there was something. Oh, I know what it is. There was these ice cream sandwiches that I was eating during the pandemic and I put on 20 pounds like a fucking fat titted asshole. Um, and somewhere during the pandemic, all of a sudden they just made them slightly smaller. You know? And I was looking at Nia going like, am I nuts? These are a little smaller. She's like, they are. Just ever so slightly small. Another corporate cunt move. What if we charged the same amount of money or maybe raised the price slightly and then made it slightly smaller? Would they notice? And if they do notice, just say that we were trying to be responsible, you know, because we're worried about the obesity epidemic. They would go like in that direction. Um, what do I miss? You know what I miss? Friendlies. Friendlies used to have a fucking cheeseburger that it wasn't on like a bulky roll. It was almost like a melt. And it was, uh, yeah, it was like their version of a cheeseburger melt. And I've never, ta I've, and I've ordered those other places they're always too big and greasy and they make me sick to my stomach. Or maybe I'm just old now and I can't eat like that. But when I was a kid, they had like those fucking all right of French fries and they had that patty melt. Oh my God. It's fucking delicious. You know what else I miss? Bob's Big Boy. When you'd go out to the Midwest and they had those chocolate malts, those burgers. I miss that place. Um, I miss Kentucky Fried Chicken. Being Kentucky Fried Chicken instead of being all ashamed of themselves. You know what I mean? You think with the LGBTQT, you know, 
all of those fucking letters and everybody being like, I'm not going to be ashamed of who I am and you're going to deal with me. You'd think that, you know, it could be LGBTQ KFC, right? You'd think that KFC is like trying to be like progressive and it's like, no, you need to go the other way. You should not be an abbreviation. You should be Kentucky Fried Chicken. You realize I'm so fucking burned out. I thought that joke was going to make sense. But then I realized KFC was them hiding, not coming out. Um, that'd be fucking hilarious. If you bought Kentucky Fried Chicken, you bought KFC, and then you fucking repurposed that song, I'm coming out. And, you, and it was a big coming out party that you were going to come back and actually say Kentucky Fried Chicken. We're no longer ashamed. You know, I look how they just changed it to KFC, but they're still making fried chicken. Everybody knows it's bad for you, but it's fucking delicious, right? Um, I think that's all I got off the top of my head. Oh, I miss sun-kissed orange so soda when it first came out, when it was cane sugar instead of that fake-ass fucking sugar that causes cancer. You know, that's something I'm waiting for a politician. Like, that's a great line for a politician. It's like, you know, this country's messed up when the country of Mexico makes better Coke than we do. Coca-Cola, that is. <laughs> you know? Like, that's the big thing out here. I don't know if they have that back east. I've been out here for so long. But people like, you know, if they ask you want a Coke, dude, they, they got Mexican Coke in there. You're like, oh, my God, they got the good stuff. And it basically tasted the way it used to taste when I was a fucking kid. You know, because that's my thing. It's like, if you're going to kill me and rot my insides, can I at least get real sugar? Is that asking too much? Like, how big does your fucking pool and yacht have to be? All right, I'm just a broken record here. I'm just a man. Oh, no. What happened? What happened here? Is it still recording? Do you believe in this podcast? Yes, I do. Okay, cool. The old me would have completely flipped out there. It's opposed to the new beaten down me that doesn't give a fuck. All right, restaurant R.I.P. Oh, I already read that. Castle. Sir Willem of Burr. Would you ever live in a castle? No, it just seems like it'd be freezing cold. You mean like a whole fucking, it's all made out of stone? I got those stupid throw rugs like in the middle of a giant room. There's a couple of lonely chairs in the corner. I know you're probably too humble to do something like that. I, it has nothing to do with being humble. It's just, I, I, it's just, do they even have windows? I'm going to get that guy with the fucking bow and arrows to protect me. Um, now you're probably too humble to do something like that. But if you're going to live in the middle of nowhere, wouldn't it be nice to have the protection of some walls? Oh, I thought you meant like an old school. Oh, you're talking about, like a, I mean, they used to build the wall around their village. Isn't that fucking nuts? <laughs> like, the, the advancement in weaponry now is that we build walls to keep people out of the country. And back then it was, it, it was just like a village. And that people would just come in and they'd see you. And their whole idea was like, let's go over there and just rape and kill everybody there and take all their stuff. I mean, we really are fucking animals. I don't know. Maybe this corporate fucking capitalism shit, is it good? I don't fucking know. Um, wouldn't it be nice to have the protection of some walls? You know what would be nice? You know what would be nice would be to have a God that makes decent human beings that sit down and talk out their fucking problems instead of killing each other. Wouldn't that be nice? I still don't understand how war is legal, you know? It's like, follow these Ten Commandments in your everyday life, and then, but when there's war, we can throw this all out the fucking window. Why? Why? Because you want some natural resources, you greedy cunts. Uh, need some advice. Hello, old Billy Bunsen. Burner. Um, 
I think this is the last question. As you can tell from my brain and my voice, I'm going to have to go a little short this week. I apologize. I'm a little short this week. That's what she said. Come on, people. Back me up. I had a question about starting to perform live since I played the guitar. Oh, that's fantastic. I've been playing for about eight years now and have always wanted to play on stage, but always got too nervous to say yes when the opportunity came. Oh, yeah, and then you fucking hate yourself afterward, right? I'm now 21 and think if some if I started to play some of the bars in my town, my success in the lady department would only improve. Of course it would, but you're also like, uh, you got to get over the stage fright first. Um, just, make, just make a fucking New Year's resolution in November. Next time somebody asks me to go on stage, I'm saying yes. And here's the thing, dude. I don't give a fuck how it goes. You're going to feel way better about yourself than if you say no again. All right? So do that. Do that for yourself. Um, the person says, I'm from the North Shore, so the music scene is already pretty good. Oh, they got a good music scene out there. That's fantastic. Always dreamed about doing a live show, especially watching classics like The Isle of Wight, 1971, ACDC Paris, 1979. Oh, yeah, that's killer. But I've never had the nuts to do it. Well, you're only 21. Get up there and do it, man. Be fantastic. Anyway, seeing that you have tons of experience on stage, do you have any advice on getting over the nerves? My buddy who's a good shit is already in a band and has offered to play weekends with his band, which could be a blast. Oh, he's already offered you. Um, I have any advice? Yes, I got a ton of advice on that. Um, call your buddy up and say you want to play, you know, this weekend or next, or next weekend, right? Whatever. Either this weekend or next weekend. Don't make it any longer than that. Because I don't know if you got family shit this weekend with Thanksgiving. Go up there. I mean, it's easy. Just he's, you got to know what songs that you're going to be jamming to. So just fucking get those songs down. Go up and go do it. Um, and here's the thing. Don't beat yourself up about how you play. All it is is about having the balls to go up there when the time comes. That's it. And then everything else, you know, everything else, it's just like is out the fucking window. Oh, of course you fuck things up. It's the first time you did it. Every single guitar hero, drummer, comedian, actor, politician, every single one of them has made every single mistake in the book a million fucking times. A million fucking times. Because that's just how it is. And then you know what? Those mistakes, you learn from them and then you don't make them. And then something else happens and, and all those mistakes become as just stories that you share with fellow performers and just laugh about them. You know, I've been in the middle of killing and I accidentally unplug the mic and then can't figure out how to plug it in. Then everybody's laughing at me. Then I lose my composure and lost the crowd. My face turned red with embarrassment and all of that shit, you know. I plugged it back. Finally, somebody had to come up on stage, show me how to plug it in or something. I forget what it was. It was some weird thing or it wasn't just a simple plug it in. I think it just took me too long. By the time I plugged it back in, the crowd had sort of turned on me, like laughing at me or something like that. And it was just like, and guess what? It wasn't fatal and it was funny. And I told it to other comedians and they laughed and it made me feel like a comedian that I had a story of going on stage and, you know, getting humiliated and, and surviving it. So um, all the rest of the times it, it went pretty good. And then all of a sudden I kind of started getting good at it and then shows some of them would be great or at least great for where I was at. And uh, I've been doing it ever since. But you couldn't have been more afraid of going up in front of people than I was. And I got over it. So if I got over it, you can get over it. And um, you can even tell your buddy, I don't know how well you know this guy in the band. Just say like, yeah, I'm not going to lie to you, dude. I'm fucking nervous about this. But it's something I really want to do. So <clears throat> I'm telling you I'm coming down this weekend or next weekend. All right? And just hold me to it. And um, dude, you could literally go up and just play one fucking song. Uh, but I can tell you, once you get up there, you're not going to want to get off. 
So I, I would try to learn a couple, two, three songs. Just go up there, man, and fucking rock out, man. Um, yeah, I would say, uh, I would say that's the deal. You know, I went to the Ferrari fucking shop. I don't know where the fuck I was. One of those casinos when I was in Vegas. And I was thinking like, oh, I'll get something for my, uh, my son. I'll get him a little, one of the little Ferrari cars. I fucking walk in there. I go, I go, are these for sale? I see these little Ferrari cars in like these glass cases. The guy's like, he goes, yeah. He goes, they're $510. I'm like, for the, for the car? <laughs> he goes, yeah. With a straight face. It's like, what is the fucking markup on that thing? 500%? There's no way it costs you more than... What does it cost you? Four bucks to make that fucking thing? So fucking stupid. So fucking stupid. You know, I had an idea, something I wanted to buy my wife and uh, for Christmas. I had it. I was like, I'm going to get that. And then it just fucking... Went out the fucking window. I've been with her forever. I don't, I, I don't even know what else to get her. Like, what the... F I've got your bracelet. I got necklace. I bought you a ring. I mean, what... what, 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 what I'm out of fucking things to do. What am I supposed to do? Am I going to buy you like that, that fucking earring to the nose? <laughs> Thing like that. That pop star back in the day. I don't want to fall in love. Um... <clears throat> Got to figure out something to get her. Um, I don't know. Her, I always tell, you know what I always tell her? She goes, what do you want for Christmas? I always say nothing. And then she goes, come on, I got to get you something. And I just say, get me an experience. So I asked for a either a barista class so I can finish off my cappuccinos with a little design. Right, so I can get attention from people like, ooh, where'd you learn how to do that? Uh, just, you know, just been doing it. Yeah. Don't give anybody any credit. You know, just take all the credit for myself. Or, I, I, you know, I saw this racing video where this guy was bringing the car around the turn, you know, using mainly the throttle, sort of turning the steering wheel and then just whipping the ass around. I'm like, you know what? That'd be cool to learn how to do that. I'm sure they have some sort of dad... Dad wants to learn how to drive the station wagon faster down the fucking street class. How about something like that, you know? But what I love about both of those things is it doesn't involve me having to find a place for some new shit. <laughs> you know? What do you want for what do you want for Christmas? Can you take me to the movies? You know? I want to see that new Joaquin Phoenix where he plays Napoleon. I love Joaquin Phoenix. It's so fucking great that there's fucking that level of actors out there, you know? Where you just know, like, not only they killer actors, but they always pick, like, great projects. Like, he's, he's one of those fucking guys. It's just like, if you just say that guy's name, it's like, all right, I'm watching it. I'm going to watch that. It's going to be worth it. Um, and I still haven't seen Killers of the Flower Moon. Fucking ridiculous. But now I have time off. I might do that. I might do that on Wednesday. I think I'll have time. I'm just literally talking to myself at this point. All right, I'm over it. Whatever. If we missed the fucking field goal. I've talked myself down from the ledge. And uh, I'm going to watch the late game here. All right, that's it. You guys have a wonderful Thanksgiving. Um, I'm. What am I thankful for? I'm thankful that you guys listen to this podcast, that you guys come out to my shows. Um that you laugh at my jokes. It makes me feel great when I hear you guys laughing, especially when I do a new joke. Um, so uh, thank you for another year of showing up to my show so I could live my dream. All right. And with that, go fuck yourselves. Have a great Thanksgiving. And I'll talk to you. Uh, I'll talk to you on Thursday. All right.